would be a really nice idea to um, do Snack and a Story because obviously you're not getting that right now. Um, so hopefully you're in the right now and you're getting a snack. If not, you can pause the video and go and get one. And um, enjoy reading our story. Um, we were halfway through reading our book, How to Make a Better World. Um, I have, the next page we were about to read was actually um, called Finding Your Cause. There are so many good causes out there, it's difficult to know where to start. This quiz will help you find the issue closest to your heart. So I've uploaded it onto the team's files and if you go through each question and think what's most, how you would answer, what's most important to you. And at the bottom it says if you mostly answer, you count how many A's you answered, how many B's, how many C's, how many D's. If you mostly answered A's, it says you'd be an animal rights activist. If you mostly answered B's, you'd be a community activist. If you mostly answered C's, you'd be a human rights activist. And if you mostly answered D's, you'd be an environmentalist activist. So all that really means is that's what's really important to you and that's where you'd want to make a difference in the world. So I'm going to um, actually start with the chapter about the environment because that links to our topic really really well so protecting the environment is vitally important for the future of our planet this chapter explores how you can be part of making a better world for all life on earth from protecting animals to slowing down climate change how to be an environmental activist if you're passionate about protecting our planet and you're looking to get involved in environmental activism, there are a host of ways to help. Eco-friendly life. Activism begins with the choices we make every day. Start by turning off the tap whilst you're brushing your teeth. Volunteer in your community. Check out kid-friendly activities going on in your area, such as tree planting campaigns. Join a movement. Consider joining a national or international organisation to keep up to date with news and campaigns. Don't be defeated. Remember that every single step you take to help matters. My dad taught me that we have a responsibility to protect the earth the way our ancestors did. The world is seeing how powerful young people are. Animal activism. As they can't speak up for themselves, animals need us to use our voices for them. We can help protect animals by making good choices. Animal testing. Make sure the products that you buy are cruelty free. Testing beauty products on animals is illegal in many countries, but not everywhere. Have a wild garden. You can create a sanctuary for wildlife, no matter how small your space. Plant a mix of flowers and plants that will attract birds, butterflies and bees. Respect wildlife. Enjoy getting out into nature, but take care not to disrupt any creatures living there, including when you go on holiday. Protect habitats. Oil palms, which produce palm oil, are grown on huge plantations. Rainforest is cleared to make space for them, leaving orangutans with nowhere to live. So try to choose products without the palm oil in them. Be the best pet owner. Getting a pet is important to research. Before getting a pet, it's important to research everything you will need. You will need to be sure you can give a pet a happy, healthy life. Eat organic. Animals farmed organically have more space, natural food and higher standards of welfare. Choose, try to choose organic meat and eggs where possible. A meaty problem. Oh, you'll all love this one. Fart. Cows create 65% of greenhouse gases that come from farming. A huge number of animals are raised for food. This is damaging the environment and contributes to climate change. Swapping meat for vegetables is a big way to make a difference whether it's going vegetarian on certain days or giving animal products up altogether. Now, obviously, that's completely um, 
choice and some people are choosing to do that um, and some people are just choosing to have one day a week where they don't eat meat um, just to make that little bit of difference but it's completely your diet and completely your choice burp most methane from cows comes from burps more than a billion cow burps happen every 90 seconds too many cows Cows provide us with beef, milk, cheese and materials such as leather. Their poo can even be used as garden fertiliser. There is such a high demand for these things that huge areas of rainforest have been cleared to raise cattle. Food energy. Farming animals for food uses much more energy and water than growing vegetables or grains. Meat production uses a lot of land but provides only 18% of the energy people get from food. Non-meat foods usually do less damage to the environment. Nuts. Growing nuts creates only 1% of greenhouse gases as the same amount of beef. Farm fish. Farming fish such as salmon creates only 17% of beef's greenhouse gases. And lentils have a similar impact to nuts and are protein packed and a great alternative to meat. Now a lot of you were asking about veganism when we were in class. Um, so vegans are, um, a vegan diet is where you don't need to eat any product from an animal. Um, so they avoid food that comes from any animals including meat, milk and eggs. But obviously um, vegans have to be very careful that they are still getting all the nutrition that they need um, from the, the rest of the food field. Eat the rainbow. Did you know that different coloured plants provide us with different vitamins? Try eating as many colours as you can. Green living. More than half of the world's population now lives in cities. And that number is growing. Whether you live in a city, a smaller town or somewhere more rural, it's vital to make sure that where you live is as eco-friendly and healthy as it can be. A green roof that's covered in plants provides air quality and is a haven for wildlife. You might have seen them in some houses more on probably on holiday. Um, I've not seen many in this country but they, they, they do exist. Solar panels provide renewable energy which is pollution free and provides energy for homes. Now you will have seen these before, um, they're on usually on people's roofs and what they do is they absorb the sunlight and then the energy gets from the sun gets transferred back to make um, electricity. Some tall buildings house bees on the roof and that makes sure the bees have a good home. People put bird boxes and feeders to help birds survive. Their songs bring nature into the city. Well-designed green buildings and neighbourhoods are proven to make people happier. Green buildings have lots of natural light. They are also energy efficient, staying cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Flower and herb boxes brighten up grey urban streets. And trees provide, produce oxygen, absorb pollution, shelter wildlife and look beautiful. Energy saving street lights switch on only when someone is passing. Restricting the use of polluting vehicles makes the air cleaner. Breathing in good quality air is great for our health. This is called a low emission zone. Providing safe cycling lanes means more people will choose to travel by bike. Pet owners are more likely to talk to their neighbours, chatting to other people in um, other people's builds a community. Clean air makes it much nicer to get outside for some healthy exercise. So some cities have already started um, building buildings like this um, to make sure that there, there is more green living and might be the way the future goes, it's looking likely. So just reflecting on um, today's snack on the story, you can do the, the quiz um, that I've uploaded and also have a wee think, what, could, what would you like to do um, maybe to help animals or to help the environment? 
give you one thing that you would either continue doing, something you're allowed to do, or something that you would like to change. Thank you.